Welcome, welcome. Today's guest is Katie Duaron from Moncton. She is a freelance artist. She has been all over the news. She's very big on Facebook. She's done a lot of pieces for um, hotels and different corporate events and charity events and businesses and things um, in the you know Atlanta Canadian area. And she also does a ton of uh, art pieces for private collector. So very excited to dive into her art, her business and her future. So hope you enjoy. Hello, Katie. So I just did your, um, I pre-recorded your intro, but uh, for those of you listening, Katie Duero is a um, artist based in Moncton. She's a friend of mine for a long time. Uh, really happy to dive into things with you. How you doing, Katie? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> this has kind of been a long time coming. I think it was inevitable that I would eventually have you on. I forced you to have me on because you kept having like super popular people. And then I was like, can you have me on? <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 I think I think you did ask yeah, I asked, me on, but <laughs> I asked once or twice. <laughs> you've been you've been on my list, though, to um, to contact. It's kind of hard. Like uh, I'm trying to get like stagger my guests. So it's not just like all local guests or okay. all guests within a certain niche yeah. or or whatever, right? So you're actually the first artist. I do have one other artist that's um, based in the UK. I plan on interviewing, oh. but you're the first uh, of that industry. So it's pretty cool. Cool. There's not many yeah. like visual arts artists as well. Like there's more like musician artists or. So, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of hobbyists but yeah. not a lot of people that are doing it like yourself yeah. and like making a living out of it. Right. That's why I always say when someone's like, what do you do for like, what's your career? I always say, well, I'm a full-time artist <laughs> because right. there's so many people that are like, I'm an artist, but not many people do it full time. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was the same when I was kind of in my um, photography era, oh, it was okay. kind of the same thing. So many people identified as a photographer, but <laughs> Identified. I identified as a photographer. <laughs> identified as a photographer, but that wasn't like their full time gig, right? So, you know, even me, I mean, I made a few dollars doing photography, yeah. but I was never full time. So I always felt weird calling myself a photographer for that reason. Okay. It's just funny you know. when you say identified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what uh what have you been up to? Have you been painting a lot now or do you kind of take a break this time of year or what? Um, for me. It's always consistent, like I'm always painting all the time, and it's up to me when it's slow or not, because it's always busy, so if it's going to be slow, then I'm going to basically just tell people, hey, I can't have your painting done until two months or a month or something, so right. basically it never slows down, and it's up to me to make my own schedule, in, in other words, so yeah, it's just, it's always busy, but I like it, I like being busy, and I'm lucky. So do you find like with Christmas time, is there an increased demand? Like most businesses or no? It used to be when I started when my art was cheaper, but now like not many people want to give their, you know, their loved one a $700 painting for a Christmas gift. So, right. But um, yeah, a lot of the orders I do are also when I talk on podcasts, I find I can't talk well, like, I don't know why. Anyway, um, so if my words don't make sense. Am I, make, am I making you nervous, Katie? When I, when I normally talk, I talk super well. But when I talk on podcasts, it's like I, I don't understand English. Yeah, I get nervous. Okay, what was the question? You're, you're used to the pressures of like CTV cameras and, <laughs> and all of that. They don't even have cameras. They just do a phone. Oh, really? They get rid of their cameraman. Anyway, uh, what was the question? <laughs> Budget cuts. Am I busy? Yeah, I'm always busy. I don't know. Yeah, but at Christmas time, does oh, you find sales like yeah. are are you busy based on what you can produce, or are you busy based on the customer demand? Um, I'm busy based on orders, so I do mostly orders, and everything I make sells. So I could be as busy as I want, but on average, I make 250 paintings a year. Um, so that's as busy as I can be. I can't physically produce more. I make roughly ish like five a week. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you're painting like, five paintings a week. That must be like mentally exhausting. 
No, like, I find it fun. I think it does tire me, though, like, even though I love it. But, um, yeah, yeah, I have weird, weird sleeping habits, which I'd like to improve, which I slowly am, actually. But, anyway, typically I start work at, like, supper time, go to bed at, like, 2. So you paint from supper time (laughs) till 2 a.m.? Yeah, like, after this, I'm going to (laughs) paint. So what time do you get up in the morning? Do you sleep in? Oh, don't worry about it. (laughs) <laughs> like 11 i don't know it's it's bad but i've been slowly changing it like lately i've been going to bed at 1 30 instead of two so every big, every big day, difference every day i go to bed 10 minutes earlier so eventually my goal is to be going to bed at 12 okay do you want to know more about my sleep schedule i'll tell you that's <laughs> so why you're having me on I- I struggle with that too, though. Like last night, I actually took a melatonin to knock myself out to try to correct it. I find when I try to go to bed early, it's a fine line. If I try to go to bed too early, I'll just roll around in my bed all night and then it'll be late before I actually fall asleep. And then if I go to bed too late, well, then I'm tired the next day, right? So it's always like, for me, it's always that fine line. And the only way I can control it is if I take like a melatonin or something to knock me out. No, I can fall asleep easy. I just, it's more of a habit thing. Right. Well, yeah, it's hard. It's almost like you have to break the cycle yeah. uh, and exhaust yourself, like force yourself up early a few days, and then you'll be so tired by the evening that it'll knock you out, right? Yeah. Are you mad I'm not wearing a Country Liberty hat? <laughs> no, I'll let it slide. We have a hat just like that coming out, though, this spring. What do you mean? Wow, way to, way to like, self-promote. <laughs> the same style. Oh, yeah, of course. Any chance I can get. So it's um, – what is this team, by the way? <laughs> that's that's the new york yankees yeah okay. but that basic like dad style that like a lot of girls wear we're coming out with a style just like that in this, this spring what do you mean dad style oh like the shape it's like a dad hat is, okay, the, is okay. the like type of the hat yeah okay. like i'm wearing like a rope hat you would call it yeah. that would be like a dad hat it's like the okay. category gotcha mm-hmm. that looks like yeah. a boating hat yeah some people think it's like a golf hat or whatever oh, i yeah. see a pile of these um in nashville that's where i first started seeing them and as you know, I love Nashville, so I want to do everything that they're doing. I want to go to Nashville. I feel like every girl goes there for the bachelorette party. <laughs> they they literally do. It's yeah, the bachelorette capital of the U.S. Is, oh, is, is it? Is okay. Nashville. Broadway, yeah. It's mayhem. Wow. Cool. I don't know. I don't Because you don't drink, right? I don't know if you'd like, like, do you like masses, like groups of just wasted people? Because that's what I Broadway love- is. Nah, just kidding. No, I think there's a lot of fun stuff to do in Nashville. There's um, seems like an exciting place. It's not just a bunch of drinkers. I'm like defending well, bachel- it. I've never the, been there. <laughs> the bachelorette groups they go to Broadway oh. and they go hard for like what a weekend. What do you weekend. mean Broadway? I thought Broadway is like a musical theater. <laughs> Broad. Well, there's Broadway. Yeah, and where is that? New York. There's like yeah. multiple Broadways throughout the U.S., but Broadway is the main street. It's like basically oh. the strip. Of gotcha. Nashville, I don't like know. the okay. Vegas Strip, but yeah, Nashville version is wow. Broadway. This is a this is a tourism ad for Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have to go. I plan on spending like a lot of time down there this year. Yeah. Like, I want to get um. They have like short term uh, apartment rentals, so right. I plan on renting for like I don't know, maybe a few months at a time. Oh, really? So you love it that and, much? Yeah, I like it, but I also see a huge opportunity for Country Liberty down there. I find I have a hard time like keeping up with all of your projects. And I was going to ask you like questions and I'm like, I don't even know what, like, don't you have, you have Airbnbs right now or something or am I being wrong? No, you're, you know, you're right in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Okay. I have a hard time keeping up with it too. <laughs> with like a honestly. bunch of glass windows, right? Like they look, yep. okay. And how, do you have one, more than one or just one? There's an, there's an A-frame and then there's six tiny homes. Okay. So you have all those. That's, I wasn't sure if you just kept like promoting them. I'm like, wow, he's really, like, <laughs> but I was like, I was pretty sure there's yours, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. It's like, no. Yeah, I've been okay. Yeah, I've been working on that for two years. I have a business partner that's based in Nova Scotia for okay. that project. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's going on, and and honestly, I have such a hard time too. We're we're the same. Our personalities are the same, like that. Like we just are a little chaotic, and um. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I struggle with that. And everything I'm learning, Katie, is telling me to focus. Like every book I'm reading, everything I'm learning from, like. At least you like can. I can't even open up a book to, to tell well, me. Well, audiobooks. Okay. Yeah. Audiobooks are good. Yeah, I do podcasts. podcasts. And podcasts. Comedy yeah. podcasts, though. Um, wait. <laughs> so not, so not much education. Not to, not to interrupt you, but the are they called Airbnbs? Is that what they're called? 
uh, well, they're on Airbnb. Okay. It's it's its own business. It's called Cabina, which is a Scandinavian translation for cabin. Um, so it's a re- it's like a small resort is what it is. But yeah, we're listed on Airbnb and we're listed on our own hosting site as well. Did you design them? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, my partner and I did. Yeah, there's um, yeah, they're like, so nice. I did see them. I just wasn't sure if they were yours because I'm like, no, we can't be doing yeah. that too. I am. Yeah, it's it's mayhem. And like I said, everything I've been learning in the past, like literally two years is telling me to like focus on one thing, which would be like country liberty, you know, yeah. but um, I promised myself I'm going to do that. And that's it. And country liberty no more. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And they're all in Nova Scotia. Yeah, they're all just outside of Wentworth. Those ones. Yeah, it's a popular like travel spot. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe we'll have to collab on some art. We need so our A-frame is the walls are bare. We need some art. Okay. Maybe we could do a little trade off or a little because we did that with Liberty Village, remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that was more for a giveaway, I guess. Yeah. That was a fun place. That seemed like so this is kind of more classy and whereas yeah. Liberty Village was more like camp style. Yeah, it's Liberty Village was feel. Yeah, exactly. More casual camp style and it wasn't Liberty Village, um, nothing was new. Like I brought in buildings, brought in cabins from other places and okay. made them my own, yeah, retrofitted, yeah. you know, I guess. But for Cabina, um, everything's brand new. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, it's nicer and it's more premium. Like even the finishes and stuff yeah. inside are a lot nicer. And Got to get that um, money. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, we're just starting. So I guess we'll see. But it certainly cost a lot more. So, but I think like a lot of mistakes I made with Liberty Village, I hope I corrected with this. Yeah, and, yeah. True. You know, it's kind of the whole thing. Well, they're beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So what else is uh what else is new <laughs> with you just outside of work? Uh I don't know. I feel like that's my life. Like I don't even go to the gym anymore, which is bad. I need to get back on my gym schedule. I love how I'm just like telling you my whole life. You're actually my therapist, <laughs> not a podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'll invoice well, actually, you for this. I'm having a really hard time right now. No, just kidding. Um <laughs> I find I get like hyper focused into something i have a hard time balancing i'm always like posting about it's so important to balance but i'm like awful at it that's why i like post about it a lot right right so although i am pretty social like i make time to see my friends like that's very important for me for like mental health and just to be social in general i feel like it's healthy especially as an artist when you work alone all the time Mm -hmm. but i would like to make the gym a priority again and I told myself I'm not going to get back in January because then it's not going to work. And that's too cliche. But, yeah, it's been like three months I haven't gone to the gym. So typically I would answer that, but I haven't been there in a while. So basically all I do is work and see my friends. <laughs> well, that would probably help with your sleep schedule, too, if you're yeah, forcing yourself out of bed and then exhausting yourself. <laughs> well, with I'm really exposing myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go to bed later. <laughs> so bad well, you're honest, at least. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the funny thing, the funny thing is, is like it all, we all know what we need to do. We yeah, need to yeah. eat healthy. We need to sleep eight hour, eight plus hours a night. We need to exercise, but it's so damn hard to implement. It's I so hard to do it all. I don't know how people like, I have a full-time job, which isn't that impressive, but to me, well, I do probably work more than the average person just because owning a business is like, it's not eight to five. So yeah, of course. not to like throw anyone on the bus, but it's. <laughs> I work it's a lot. seven till two. I it's see- seven p.m. till two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I work a lot. I see my friends, but I don't know how people do that. Go to the gym, then have kids. I'm like, and a how relationship. You- yeah, and, like how yeah. do you balance? Like something's going to uh, not be healthy. Like either your health yeah. or your I don't know. Like no yeah, one I don't can know. excel at everything. I don't know how people ba- manage all that. Cause like for me, I am barely hanging on like business wise, doing my best as best I can. And then I'm exhausted. Like I don't have energy to, if I was in a relationship, I wouldn't have energy for it right now, let alone kids or pets or all that stuff. Right. You're social, Crazy. but I feel like a lot of times you're social. It's with them for work too, as well. Yeah, so like, times. Do you- <laughs> so like, do you see your friends? Um, Honestly, well, this time of year, I get pretty antisocial. Okay. Uh, the season so of darkness. I, 
the season of darkness and misery and and i'm a summer person like this yeah. the, this sunshine like lights me up the late sunsets and then like all the summer activities like boating and being outside and being on the water and yeah. all that like that's what i really really love and then this time of year i just get through it but i try to take this time to like focus on work and like yeah. whatever right uh yeah. education and things like that because in the summer i don't have as much time i'm just kind of on autopilot um but yeah no i definitely don't socialize as much as i would like to i i i was playing hockey this year so i get a little bit of socializing playing hockey but that's also really exhausting and time consuming and a commitment so i'm really realizing my limitations like i definitely won't play hockey next year therefore i will have more time to probably okay. hang out first of all i'll have more time for rest on the weekends because now i basically ne just never rest and and then i'll have more time for friends and stuff too like childhood friends and stuff on the weekends right yeah, I guess you can't do everything. Although hockey is being physical and being social and it's something that you love. Like it's kind of was your passion a bit. Yeah, it Are, was. It Yeah, okay. it's not really anymore, to be honest. Like I it's it. I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm sore. Like I'm not as good as I was, you know, I'm slower. Like oh, it's okay. just. I yeah. thought you been like the best on the team. Like everybody would have been like, oh, Sawyer's playing. No. <laughs> is it just no, like I a don't... men's pickup lead or is it? no no it's it's senior like we get paid and we it's oh, like do? Okay. it's yeah it's taken like pretty like pretty it's taken serious for senior like it's okay. taken serious for what it is i didn't know there um, was such thing as that like i thought it was just like the wildcats and after that it's over well <laughs> there's like wildcats basically is. And that's it. yeah well i mean if you want to like yeah if you want to be good or make a career of it it's absolutely over if you don't make those stages so we're at the end of the line here this is a huge blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So you uh, mentioned that you uh, mentioned that you don't feel like you socialize and and, no, and you work alone. No, but when you're working, so do you? Is that like how, what's that like being an artist just working on your own? Do you find that isolating? What's it like being a loner? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's it like being a loser, Katie? <laughs> what's it like being a loser. <laughs> it's all right. Well, that's a lot of artists. I love how I'm just speaking in such general terms. Like, I think a lot of artists are introverted. Not yeah. all, but that's kind of like the stereotype. And a lot of artists are really like, I'm an artist, and that's their whole identity. And I don't want to be like that. Like, I want to be um, Katie first and my job as an artist. Like, I don't want my identity to be my career. Whereas a lot right. of artists, I find they, like, really wear the artist's cap, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So that's why I really put an emphasis on, you know, I have my work life, but I also have a social life and art doesn't consume me um, because I could see how it can, especially if you want to get better as an artist. Like if I wanted to, I made a post the other day, like if you want to level up and be the best at something, you almost can't really have a balanced lifestyle because it's almost impossible. <laughs> like, so at this point I kind of value balance and having a social life and not being maybe the best at being an artist, but mm -hmm. at least like, I'm not lazy. I still work hard, but um, yeah, I just try to do everything. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's tough. And just being a business owner and an artist, yep. those two things, like it really makes you a minority because most yeah. people aren't an artist and most people aren't a business owner. Right. And you're both. So I, yeah. I can totally see how that would be tough. Like, do you have other artists and stuff that you're talking with and talking these things through or, or what? Well, is there like a, is there like a clan of you guys, like a there, network of artists that. Yeah, are there touch? is like the artists. There's like artist groups in New Brunswick. And however, I think, and not every artist would say this, I find it's very competitive because there's only so many artists that can survive. It's not like a need, no yeah. one needs art. Like, it's not like I'm a plumber or a realtor or something that you need, art's just like a want. So there can only be so many that can really survive. That might be like controversial, but um, I don't know. So I find it's very, it's very, yeah. Like I just, it's hard to make friends with this artist. Competitive, <laughs> so it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's basically me, myself, and I, and I'm not friends with too many artists. There are some that we're doing different mediums and stuff, but yeah, 
But um, yeah, I rely on, that's why I rely so much on marketing and advertising and posting a lot because I have to convince people that they need art. Right. Whereas like another career, they might just call you, like if you're a mechanic or something, you don't need to like, yep. push as much. Yeah, I feel the same pressure with my businesses too, always being on the forefront of people's minds, you know, because yeah. if not, there's like a million other options that they could choose, right? Yeah, I find you do it in a very professional, clean way. Like I find I'm a little bit more like out there or people probably either love me or hate me, but I don't really care. Like yeah. I'm just like, oh, well, I need to pay the bills. So I'll be as yeah as possible. Well, you do a great job of like communicating your personality online. <laughs> and I think that that's a big reason why you probably have the client base you have is because they like buying from you specifically because yeah. of your personality. Yeah, I feel like if you have a, if you create a sense of, an emotional bond between your client and they feel like they know you, then they want to yep. support you because they feel like, Oh, I'm supporting a local artist. I know her ish. Yeah. Um, yeah. I find that a lot of people that message me will say, Hey, I want to buy a painting from you, Katie, because you do so much in the community with like charities and stuff. I find that's a big reason why people buy as well. Like when they see that you're giving back right. and stuff. So it's all marketing. Nothing I do is, I I feel okay. like um I feel like people that have art love to talk about the art they have. Yeah, so totally. I think like if you, like that's a great conversation starter starter. Like this is Katie, she's local. She helps this charity, she helps that charity. This is, you know, she, and and if they feel like they know you, they know more about your personality and things and it's more like talking pieces, right? As yeah. they're sitting there looking at your art. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Most people that buy from me, it's well, I shouldn't say most. Half the people that buy from me, it's for a gift. So it's for yeah. a loved one. It's a surprise. It's somebody died, an anniversary gift, retirement gift. And then the other half, it's very personal. It's like, oh, I just went through a divorce. I want you to paint me a lion because this represents the strength. Like, there's always a story behind each painting, which I like because, right. um, yeah, you get to hear about people's life. Like, I find people really, like, open up more with art or something. So right. you, I find a part of like the reason I can sell a lot is because I'll listen and talk with them and I always do right. phone calls. So it's a bit of, it's not just ordering a painting, which that's what I thought it was when I was going to start. Like, okay, what do you want? Yep. Okay. Got it. Now I'm like, okay, right. so what, how was your divorce? <laughs> like, <laughs> was it great? Did you have a great divorce? <laughs> Did you get his oh. money? <laughs> no. <laughs> what did you get, girl? <laughs> get the bag. <laughs> get it. So when you hear when you hear like the reasons why someone's ordering, does that change the actual art itself? Like if I was ordering from a, you know, I just I don't know something great just happened. Now I want to order a, a painting of a lion. Would that be different if I called you and said I just went through a divorce? I want a painting of a lion. You know? <laughs> no, it's gonna be the same. <laughs> <laughs> so the lion, the lion will be equally as happy or upset. <laughs> no, like I like hearing their stories because I feel like it's, I don't know, I'm just a social person. I like talking, but I mean, if you send me a picture and you say, I want this done, I'm going to paint it the same regardless of what the story is. Right, Cause okay. I'm going to do my best no matter what. Um, yeah. But <laughs> do most of your clients send you a submit like a yeah, inspo so, and say, make something similar. So like I said, half of what I do or less than half of what I do is order or sorry, is, um, for sale. So it's just random stuff I thought of, Hey, this is for sale. But then the yeah. orders that I receive, which is more than half, um, a lot of times they'll say, well, they'll say, Hey, I saw you made this before. Can you make it again? So there's a lot of that. Right. And then there's, Hey, I saw this picture. Sometimes I find it's really difficult when people are like, okay, so they'll create an image in their head that represents 50 things. And I'm like, Whoa, slow down. Can you send me something? And mm. cause I find it gets too complex when I'm like trying to read their mind. Um, right but it's funny men and women are different when when ordering men are very typically are very simple like okay uh i like this painting can you make it again yeah sure done and then women are yeah. like they have a big story <laughs> 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 so what's your favorite client base then no I don't. you you do stuff for you you do stuff for hotels and corporate stuff too and yeah, share, yeah. like what's I'll, your favorite i'll take everybody's money <laughs> Uh, my favorite, I like doing abstract because it's really simple. Abstract art is quick. So I like make, and it's, it kind of makes the sense, 
like I'm making fast money in a way. So I feel like that's a wrong answer. Um, I like making... Well, there's no wrong answer. <laughs> so I like it, but um, yeah. Clients that are pretty easy to work. Most people are easy to deal with though, I find. Especially with, with art because it's, I don't know, it's a... Uh, People usually have big jobs that are ordering for me. Wow, I'm sounding so bad. But like, it's usually professionals, I should say. So like lawyers right. and doctors and business owners that are buying from me and they're usually pretty simple to deal with. And there's no, there's no like, hey, uh, sorry, I'm not gonna be able to afford this painting or. Uh. Right. Whereas when I first started, I was selling my art for, for cheaper. And I would always have issues with clients like, oh, my rent gonna come in, I gotta pay. And that's just like a, so yeah, now I don't really, clients. yeah, yeah. Different client base. Yeah. And that like as a parallel to, to, to my rentals. No, it doesn't sound bad. That's yeah, business. Yeah. Yeah. Like for our rent, like for Liberty Village, um, you know, it was a cheaper price point. It was a it was a lower, it was still a good experience, but it was a lower end experience than what we're trying to promote at Cabina. So that'll bring it a whole different client base too, right? Yeah. And that's just that's the world of business. Yeah, and yeah. that's what pricing does. Pricing eliminates, you know, yeah, people that can't afford things. But that's, I, that's how it is. It's just in general. I, I'm not. I'm generalizing. Like, obviously, there's. I, I deal with all types of people, but uh, I had mm -hmm. I had more issues in the beginning. Just to clarify, in case anyone's like, actually, what you're doing is very hurtful to. <laughs> I love supporting artists, and I never had a job was, before. Okay, it was see, when it was a few years ago when we. With me. It was a few years ago when we first met. Um. And please tell me you're not still doing this. You were like, yeah, like I just allow people to come to my apartment with cash and just pay me like when they can with cash in my apartment, give them my home address. Like, are you still doing that, Katie? No, no. That was like in the very beginning when I wasn't even registered business and I was like not making that much. Yeah. Now I have to make so much. Like after you make so much a year, you have to claim it. So you can't do cash for one. So and most people who mess it who. Who ordered it was from more me. the stranger showing up at your yeah, apartment yeah, yeah, yeah. that concerned me. Yeah. <laughs> Most people who order from me are um, professionals. So it's like invoices. and But no, I have a lot of repeat customers. And if I see someone who I'm like, oh, they kind of look like I don't know this person. I don't have any mutual friends with them. I'll say, hey, can we meet at, a, I don't know, the parking lot <laughs> outside? But I have, yeah, I, if anyone looks too, I don't know, if anyone, I just don't feel super, if my intuition bells go off, I'll say, hey, let's meet at Tim Hortons at a, at a yeah. gas, or a gas station or something. I don't know. Fair enough. But that's what I liked about having a studio. I could just meet them there. But I don't know. I sell mostly to women and. and Professionals. Yeah. I don't, I've never had issues, to be honest. Like, I've never had any weird clients or anything like that. Everyone's been, everyone's so nice to me. Like, honestly, it's, it's almost crazy. Like how many good experiences I've had with my business. Like people are typically happy to get a painting, right? They're in a good mood. I'm not like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like there's some jobs where people aren't really excited to see like a dentist, for instance, they're probably yeah. interacting more with people that are like nervous or not happy to see them. But with me, everyone's super happy to finally, and when they see the painting and in real life, they're a lot more excited because like, oh, like the first thing they say usually is it looks so much better in, in real life. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have any like creepy people or no. Yeah. I love how true. like you asked me one question and I went, went on. I'm like, so in 1993, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm used to you by now. Where'd you get your mic, by the way? Looks nice. Where'd I don't you know where I got this. <laughs> Amazon, maybe I don't know. I had so my my uh, I got partnered up with like a podcast a guy that produces podcasts. So he just sent me a bunch of links because I was part of like I've wanted to start a podcast for a long time. I recorded episodes in 2017 or 2018. Never seen the light of day because they're actually a lot of work, and I didn't want to do any of that. So then I hired someone to help me with that, and he basically just set me up with all the equipment. Like I hate doing research and stuff like that, and like so he just basically set me up with all of that um so i can't even tell you where i got half the stuff i basically okay. just clicked the link bought it and do you find yeah. it helps your business having a podcast or is it more just a fun thing or um i think it's too early because yeah. i've only got like i don't know maybe 10 episodes out um i think it's too early to really know personally i wanted to, it's more of a personal thing i want to do because i i like having these interesting conversations it's, and it goes back to being antisocial. like 
I don't have these co- conversations that often. I don't have um, career based and business yeah. type conversations as often as I would like to. So I seen the podcast as a way to um, share my own personality with you know the internet in longer form yeah, yeah. than just like here's a highlighted photo or a stupid yeah. TikTok. I think um, it's smart. But Sorry. <laughs> I, I, and I was just gonna say like also I, it connects me with people. It it's an invitation to have conversations like this that we m- may not otherwise have, you know? Yeah. No, what I was going to say is I think it's smart because yes, you sell your brand. Like, yes, for instance, like Elvis Presley, he's, he sold his songs. Okay. Just, just wait. <laughs> he's, How are you going to connect me and Elvis Presley? I'm so curious. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. Elvis <laughs> sold his songs people bought his music okay yeah but they didn't just buy his music they bought him they bought his you know his appeal his charisma how he interacted with the audience um his interviews all that like so you're in the sense you're not just selling your clothes you're kind of selling yourself as well like if you were some nerd that was in a basement (laughs) that was like 40 pounds maybe not everybody would buy from you like you're kind of selling your brand, your charisma, your personality, and you're getting people to know who you are, which is yeah. helping you sell. So I think it's smart because similar to me, I put myself out there a lot because people associate me with the art, if that makes sense. And the same, like they're going to associate, the more they know about you, the more they want to support you as well. So yeah. yeah, you're not just selling clothes. You're selling, basically you're yeah. Elvis Presley and you need to understand. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying or not? Yeah, no, I do. I get the I get the comparison. Um, yeah, this was a bad idea, but and in Atlantic Canada, because we're so small, I think people do really buy from. They're supporting the people behind it, you know, and I think um, with our, both of our businesses, that's a big component of why we are successful. And I think that it's important not to forget that, in the yeah, sense yeah. that, you know, just to continuously put ourselves out there, some way, shape, or form. I know social media and stuff can be exhausting. Uh, but just to put ourselves out there and, and also just, again, be at the forefront of people's minds. Like here's someone that's doing something unconventional. Let's support that because I know with country Liberty, a big part of our customer base still isn't necessarily the country lifestyle, proud customers that we are, you know, branding for and advocating for a lot of it is local people that want to support local. That's their primary goal is to support local, not wear something that's country, country lifestyle. Right. Yeah. And it's a feel good feeling so people say that with me yeah. as well they say hey i um i love that i can support local and da, da, da. it's like makes them feel good so i always say that like when people receive a painting i say thank you so much for supporting me and they you know they come to my apartment <laughs> they're like <laughs> they oh, get the full experience <laughs> i'm helping her pay rent they feel good about that instead of like going to a big corporation they don't know where their money just went like yeah. they don't know if they went and I try to, well, my canvases are homemade, so it's Canadian built. Um, I buy my paint from either sometimes Michael's craft store, but sometimes St. John. So I try to be as like local as possible. Right, but, right, so, right. Yeah, they know where they're actually getting their product from. I think people feel good about that. Yeah. So are you <sighs> promoting primarily on Facebook still? or Because I know you're on Instagram, but is that like your biggest channel? Yeah, I feel like that's kind of a joke, but it's why? Why do you feel like that's a joke? It's just funny. Like I don't have—I've never had a website before. (laughs) I well, you don't need it apparently. Yeah, I don't know. But I've never been to a gallery or like just most artists, professional artists. You know, they go to galleries, exhibits, etc. I just sell on Facebook, but on my business page, um, not personal page. So my business page. I sell a little bit of Instagram, but maybe like 20% because I sell typically to like 40 year olds and up. Um, Mm. So Facebook's kind of like, yeah, the hub. So it works out. Like I'm not going to change anything. I know I could change my business and grow and perhaps make mass produce prints or spend more time on paintings. I don't really know what I want to do in the future. Like right now I'm just really happy painting and I know like, People are always like, oh, you need to be growing with your business and expanding. But I'm like, I'm super happy with what I'm doing. Like, yeah, that's 
that's the goal. I mean, yeah. happy is happiness is the um, measure of success, in my opinion. Yeah. And if you're happy doing what you're doing, just do do what you're doing. Yeah, like like I, change it, right? Yeah, I like painting a lot. Like I like painting five paintings a week. I like painting every day. It's like mm. time goes by really fast. Like when I paint. But, um, yeah. Yeah. And you've been painting since you were a little kid, right? Yeah. Yeah, or drawing actually. I didn't. I went to school for drawing as well. But I just taught myself painting at like 20 or something. Oh, okay. So you just don't have a passion for drawing or you just well, prefer painting? Or what? Drawing is kind of painting. Like it's all like the same, like art. But um, right. painting, paintings sell more typically than drawings. Okay. Not always, but it's easier to sell, I should say, a painting than it would be a drawing. Right. I find. I don't know. Cool. So, so when you went to school to for drawing what did you plan on doing like starting a business no <laughs> no one actually i don't know i didn't think i could become an artist like i did that as a joke mostly <laughs> like I, jo yeah i started my my career as a joke <laughs> <laughs> my whole business is a joke obviously no i i feel like i told you the story before so in 19 no I'm just i <laughs> in high school i didn't do well academically was too busy talking to everybody no i just did not do well, so I couldn't get accepted to any universities. Wow, I'm exposing myself so much. <laughs> this is a safe space, Katie. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewatch this and be like. <laughs> and because of that, I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, I could go into a bunch of colleges, so I went to, you know, I studied personal training, I studied outdoor pursuits, so like I went to school in BC and did like outdoor adventure and then I was just doing all these random things and then I was like oh I'll go to art school for a year did that and then the last school I did was Old Thing College to work at a daycare basically I was like uh I'll work at a teacher assistant or a daycare or something but I ended up paying off my student loan um in one month selling paintings at Old Thing College to pay off my loan and then I sold like 53 paintings or something like that and like two months, I forget what it was, but basically, I posted that on Facebook, and then Global News got a heard of, got a hold of that story, and they said, "Whoa, you just sold like 53 paintings in, in like I think it was 30 days," and, and then yeah, Global News got a hold of that story, and then it got like mass shared, like I don't know, almost 3,000 times, and then right. from there, I just kept getting orders and orders, and it hasn't stopped, and I never ended up needing to work. Um, in a daycare <laughs> so i've been doing it since i was like 21 now so like 13 years just selling wow yeah so and it wasn't just that i mean i've been on the news several times and um doing a lot of self-promotion and based but that kick-started me to realize that oh it can be a career like i can actually yep. people actually do want art i never thought anyone I knew that people bought art, but I didn't think it was like as popular. Like I didn't think this many people in Moncton wanted art. Right, right. And I was never really art wasn't like like I liked art, but I was never like the art kid or anything. But um right. yeah. So huh. you probably <laughs> a lot of the art kids in school are probably like, damn it, <laughs> Katie went to school for like twelve different things. <laughs> now she's the artist and we're in jobs we don't like. <laughs> oh yeah. No. I don't know. I uh, this is, I feel like everything I say, I'm like, uh, this is supposed to show how fast I'd be canceled in real life. Because everything I say, I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't say that. Uh, probably shouldn't say that. But <laughs> I never was like an art kid in high school. I never wanted to be an art kid in high school. Like, I never even had an art teacher that was like, oh, you're super good. I always thought right. like the art kids were kind of weird and was like, oh, I don't want to be. So I kind of like stayed away from that. I was like, uh. Even like when I if, went to art school, I was like, oh, this is just do it for when I went to college. I was like, oh, let's do this for fun. Right. Like, I don't want to be an artist. Like, I just that could that could just be the school format for you as well. Yeah. I don't know. You know, like maybe maybe that cookie cutter traditional school system just wasn't for you, you know, and that's yeah, why you didn't I, feel like great me. within it. How did, you, I, how did you do in school? Are you just good at everything? It, like sports? If it makes. Business. If it makes you feel better, I didn't have a single teacher tell me I was good at anything either. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I had a teacher when I was in um when I first went to university. So this is before Country Liberty. Uh, uh, well, actually, very, very, very early days of Country Liberty. 
I was still at, in university and um, I went away for school. No one in my family had gone. To, my mother went to university in the States, but that was never really like discussed in my childhood. And then on my father's side, which is my Canadian family, no one had ever gone to school university before. So it wasn't really talked about. And um, I went just because I had a hockey scholarship. The only yeah. reason why I went my marks, I wouldn't have got in. Uh, I had no interest. Okay. I hated school. Da, da, da. So anyway, I went to um, university and I, it was like the first year Christmas I was back or something. And I bumped into one of my, one of my old teachers and I only went to university at 21 because I was doing the hockey thing. And then I, right. so I started later, So you know, it was like grocery store or whatever. And we had like the catch up where it's like, oh, hey, like, what are you up to? And I said that I, I was like, yeah, I'm in university. <laughs> and she like almost choked, like she like choked on the air, like shocked that I was in university. And I was like, what the hell? Like, fuck, I'm like, you know, but she was just like, could, could not believe it because I was not a good high school student. I was distracted. I was focused on That makes me feel hockey. better because you can't be good at everything. You can't be like, yeah, I'm really good at business. And I'm a good athlete. I'm like, all right, there's got to be something there. Oh, I, I was never good at school. And um well, I, okay. So in university, I actually got good marks because here, here I cared. <laughs> well, no, but I cared about what I was, I was learning about business yeah, yeah. and interesting things. So I actually cared and got good marks and I was proud because I, all of a sudden now school costs money and I like, don't yeah. want to just waste money. Right. So for those reasons I did do better, but, um, I was one grade point average away from being, um, uh, accepted to, uh, masters in like an MBA program without writing there's this giant test it's called a GMAT for for an MBA entry and you have to write it but I was one had I been one grade point higher I wouldn't have had to write that test I could have just got into the program because I had to write that test that's the reason oh, yeah. I didn't go to get my MBA wow. there was a book there was a book this thick and basically it was like read this book study it and write this test and I was like no I, doesn't matter like i can do business in the real world but i cannot write that test what like i was like there's no way what did you study again you studied i studied uh, economics economics for how, four is, years i did it in two and a half oh, okay so i i accelerate i accelerated i overloaded my courses and stuff when i got to school i, I was how you're like yeah i did really bad in school and then you're like yeah once i get to university i was telling my class did it in one year no no, no. Well, i just i want to get the hell out yeah. I, I wanted to get out. I felt out of place. I was old. Like I felt older. Loser. I just didn't. Yeah, I was a loser. I was like, I don't want to be here. So I just accelerated it. And I was like, the faster I can get this done, the faster I can get the hell out, start making money. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, this is not for me. Nice. So good for you. So, yeah. Did that course yeah. help you with what you're doing today at all? Or not directly. Waste, waste of time. Not directly. <laughs> well, I mean, no, because it taught me like structure. It taught me how to like critically think. It taught me how to like problem solve, taught me how to like work within a group. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. also gave me confidence because I went from being like a really bad student in high school to like being a, a better student in university. So right. those things it gave me, but the material I was learning, I right. do not apply to my business. Yeah. I feel like it's always that way. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know, like, fast forward i mean if i had kids and they asked me like you know should i go to university i don't know how i would answer that question and people do ask me should i go to university and it's just it's so dependent on who the person is right i feel like you have to do something like as long as you're doing something like don't just sit home and do nothing like yeah. either work or travel or take a yep. course but yeah but i be i firmly believe in um consistently educating yourself whether yeah. that's university or if it's same like, you know, whatever you got to advance. Cause if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. In my uh, opinion, you know? there it is. No, yeah. Even, even <laughs> what? Me, you, even me, like I took all these random courses, but it, yeah. it was good that I was like still learning and using my brain. And I did do a lot better in colleges than uh, right. high school. Cause I was interested in, um, yeah, just interested in what they're teaching to me. I remember being in high school. And so I don't know if I actually did bad because I couldn't learn. Or it's because I literally would be in class and was like, I don't, why do I need to, I don't care. Like, I just didn't care about it. Yeah. I'm guessing that's what it was, Katie. And my parents weren't like, you got to get those A's. Like, they were just like, oh, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, when I was growing up, uh, some family, like extended family and stuff, they would like, they would like tease, they would tease you in a way, be like, what do you think you're going to be a doctor? Like, ha ha. Like, you think, you know, so those things were never really I never thought they were possible for me. Not that I could ever be a doctor, but that's just an example. Listen, you could. So, 
So it was almost like um, suppressing in a way subconsciously as a kid growing up. So university and those things were just, I just never thought about it. And then when you hear those stories about like two doctors get married and have a kid and that kid becomes a doctor, like shocker, right? Cause they're grown, they, they grow in that environment. So I think the yeah. environment you're within really shapes like what you feel you can accomplish once you hit yeah. those teenage years of getting out of high school, you know, and being yeah. starting your life. My dad never had a lot of education, but he always told me that as long as you have a good personality, <laughs> you'll go far in life and a good work yeah. ethic, which maybe that worked in like the 60s. I don't know how much it works now, but anyway, that was his philosophy. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to try in school. Thanks, dad. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I believe that. There was um, an expression that kind of stuck with me. It was like, it was some kind of call in somebody inherited money and they're like, Oh, I inherited a hundred grand and I want to get rich. So they're called, they're like, how do I, like, I heard it takes money to make money. Like, how can I get rich with this? And the guy said like, to be successful or in this example, rich, you got to look at somebody's habits and their character. Yeah. So that falls into the personality category. Like if you're a piece of shit, like you're not going to be successful. Like you can cut corners and screw people over here and there and get by whatever. But yeah, yeah. generally speaking, it it's, like the probability of you being successful with that personality trait versus just being like a really good person is, is, is lopsided. Yeah. It's funny because in movies and stuff, super successful, rich people are often portrayed as like the villain or selfish, but I sell to a lot of these people and they're like some right. of the nicest people I've ever met. Like some of the nicest clients I have are the most, are the you yeah. know most successful. So yeah, it, it's, yeah, I think you, to get far in life, you have to have a good character. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it, I think it helps and it makes life worth living too. Like who wants to be miserable and like just mean and cranky and all that stuff all the time and live your life like that. That's no, you know, that's not like sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. You know, and, and I find like, um, kind of back to what we talked about, about the competition, like there's a lot of transactional people and there's a lot of people that are in it for the wrong reasons. Maybe they want to be your friend for the wrong reason. And I find that the ugliest feeling, like when you feel like someone is befriending you just because of like some type of advantage you can offer them, that's the like most I irritating did, feeling. I feel like I did that with you. <laughs> you did. <laughs> no. No, I'm going in here. It's what have you gotten from me? <laughs> I've given you nothing over these years of friendship. Do you uh, do you feel like that? Like the girls ever go on dates with you and then after like make a um, make a YouTube video? All right, I was just on a date with. <laughs> uh, no, no, but the the world of like influencers well, and all that Jason. stuff, like they, yeah, like they date strategically. And like, can you imagine the most important relationship in your life? You know, maybe outside of your parents, it's for strategy. Yeah, like that. I could not. Our I'd rather be alone. I find our age is bad for that. Like, it's pretty cringy. Like, they care about followers more than they do about. I don't know. That's I, one thing I've. Yeah. That's one thing I've certainly let go of. Like, I social media is exhausting. First of all, and I used to try like to growth hack and try to like keep up with the trends and keep up with the shit. And even on TikTok for a while, I knew I knew what to do to get like views and followers and clicks and whatever. And I just don't. And then I, I realized I was like, what am I putting out into the world? Like, do I want to put out flirty content? Is that what like you're doing? with a no, but for a while I did that oh, no. for like a for like a summer, and I was just like, <laughs> this is what gets all the because I worked so hard as a marketer in early Instagram days to market Country Liberty, and there was no like real growth available because Instagram had kind of plateaued. And then when TikTok came around with all this growth opportunity, I was like, holy shit! Like I've actually cracked the code. Like I know how to like. I did get know. more view, <laughs> views yeah, okay. and shit like that. But then I was like, what am I putting out into the world? Like, I don't, I want to be known as a business person and all that. And and if that gets me significantly less views, followers, all that shit, but it aligns me with the right people, that's a good trade. Right. And I think to your point earlier, like a lot of people are just focused on those vanity metrics of more, 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 not necessarily like the quality of, of who, you know, yeah, I think it's the same with me. I mean, my personal values, are um, perhaps like posting some things that some girls would have no issue with on like Instagram, for instance, but um, they'll get more followers or whatever. But for me, it's just like, it goes against my values. So 
I yep. think some people will like do anything for just more followers. Like that's like their number one priority, but not to say that's the only reason you can get followers. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, there's a whole category that was born of, of, and it's kind of the podcasting generation and the gossipy and like all the celebrity dating, like the celebrity dating that people used to read in like star magazine is yeah. now Instagram. Yeah. Instagram and TikTok, and it's influencers. It's not like Tom Cruise dates whoever because yeah. he's in like 10 movies. It's like whoever has X followers and is on X podcast dates whoever. And it's just, and then with all the reality TV shows too, it's just crazy. Like this reality star was on this show, that show, this show, dated that person, this person. Like, I don't know. I think it's just, it's getting wild. Yeah. Although I feel you like know. there's a shift with the, uh influencers and instagram where people are kind of getting sick of that and they they want more real authentic stuff so i feel like there's like kind of a shift with social media that people especially with tiktok like people are being more authentic and real and that's actually grabbing more attention because people like crave that like they can't relate to you know some celebrities like the kardashians anymore like it's just yeah. but so even even those celebrities can't relate to it because it's fake. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like it's yeah. not even their real life, let alone anybody else's real life. Yeah, you know? it's just a show. It's like a production. Yeah. Yeah. Would funny. you ever go on a reality show? <laughs> Have you been on one? Didn't you apply to go on one? You applied. No, I didn't apply to be on any. I was re I was recruited oh, okay. for a, for a few. For farming for love was it? That was one of them. Not okay. even kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One of them was that. Um, yeah. I had there was two dating shows. They wouldn't tell me. I had to sign a bunch of paperwork before they'd even tell me the names of the shows. Yeah. Um, one of them was like U.S. based. Um, but one of them, which I've never talked about publicly, but I should and I want to and I plan to. I just never got around to it. I almost got on the Amazing Race last year. Oh wow, cool. Why didn't you go? Yeah. I they didn't pick me. Oh wow, surprise. Yeah. Yeah, I was one of the last, I think I was the last, like I did all the steps, like the Zoom interviews, and then I did a physical, like I drove to Halifax, did a physical interview with my partner that was like recorded, filmed and all that stuff. And um, yeah, we didn't get chosen, but that was one show that I was like, it's not drama hungry based, like bullshit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was like, this is just pure competition. Like this could be fun, right? I also feel uh, like they have a quota, you know. like they need um, different... Uh... <laughs> they, need they need diversity <laughs> is that what you're saying <laughs> yeah 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 i'm sure you need a story you need to be like blind or something or <laughs> or like dying or yeah you're just yeah a white man no. like white straight man no. no yeah yeah i don't check a, enough boxes i think that uh you know i was maybe too boring but for the dating <laughs> ones and all that i mean i'm sure all these they probably looked at my TikTok following and said, Oh, let's get, let's ask this guy. Like, I'm sure that's how deep they actually looked. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but the dating ones, like I never say no to an opportunity right away. I always sit and think about it. Not that I really considered that, but I did think about like the pros and cons and, yeah. um, I think Castor is a villain though. Like you don't know how you're going to be. That's, well, that's scary. It. I've, I've, known, I've, I've heard of people and it's like ruined their life. They had to go like, they had to go and like, therapy and everything after if you're cast right yeah yeah i wouldn't want someone to be able to control the narrative that way yeah, yeah, yeah um but also like think about you have to sit and spend time with that type of person like the type of person that wants to be on react like a t t take like a cheesy dating show not some of the big ones that actually can offer offer opportunity but like a cheesy low-end dating one it's like these people just want to get famous that's why they're here and they're self-serving and they're not authentic and none of these relationships are going to be genuine because we're all just here. It's like a competition show. Like I can't sit with that level of fakeness for an extended period of time. I think I would implode. I think I would eventually just be like, I'm fucking out like smell years later and probably get like sued or like get in trouble for that. Yeah, but yeah. I would probably, I, I think I would implode spending that much time with, with those personalities, you know? I think a lot of people, to be honest, especially younger people, go on those shows just to get followers so that they can, like, end up selling some kind of skincare line at the end. Like, <laughs> I feel like half of them is just to get, like, followers, like Bachelor and yeah. Love Island and all those shows. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. But um, I, I applied for 
Bachelorette Canada before, and I didn't, I didn't get accepted. <laughs> when? When did you apply for that? Ten years ago or something. <laughs> and then I got scouted or whatever for Miss Canada, got accepted. But then um, I was like, yeah, I wonder if I can get accepted into Miss Universe Canada. And that's kind of like the ultimate they compete. Like if you win Miss Universe Canada, then each country, like then you can like win Miss Universe. Like that's like the highest you can go. So I got accepted into that. Um, it was like a bunch of, I don't know, talking and interviews and stuff like that. And they're changing the narrative too. The reason why they picked me too is because they were like, oh, you don't have surgery or anything. Like we want to have more like traditional <laughs> looking people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because a lot of the people just oh that's what they right. that's what they told you. No, well they just said like a lot of the people are like models and they have they're really picky and um yeah like they just all look alike. I don't know. Right, right. That's right. what they were saying to me, and um so yeah, I got the top forty, but then to actually like go to Toronto and do it, my I didn't. I was just like I don't know. I didn't care that much. I felt like it was more of an ego thing, like. To do it, it was like, oh, why do I want to be there? Is, mm. I feel like it was just like, an, I don't know. But it probably would have been fun. I wish I kind of did it. Now it's too late. So, <laughs> But that's, yeah. just, that's the only like competition thing. I don't know. But yeah, I think it well, it's good on It's good on you to recognize that um, that could have been just ego. I catch myself. I ask myself that a lot now. Like, why do I want to do this? You know, like, is yeah. this just vanity? Is this just ego? Is there a real you know, genuine, um, reason why I want to pursue something. And those shows, the amazing race would have been cool. Cause you travel across the country and then the winner wins a bunch of money and, a um, international trip and all that stuff. Like that would have been worth it. But there was other shows where the winnings really even wasn't worth your time. Yeah. Like, cause you're, you're dedicating 30 to 90 days. Like if I just worked every day, I would make that money, yeah, yeah. right? Versus like it just it didn't really add up. And then I'm like, well, why am I even thinking about this? Because math, like it just it doesn't make but, sense on paper. But I could have promoted your business a bit, perhaps. Yeah, so. I thought of that. Yeah, I, I yeah. Think. Big 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 brother reached out. Um, Big Brother oh, wow. Canada, and they wanted me on. Yeah, and yeah. I was thinking like, I've never watched that show before. So I watched my first episode after they reached out. And um, after one episode, it was the season. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but the whole house was like these crazy colors. You'd probably love it. I would have got a friggin' headache in there. Like there's no, I was like, I couldn't live in that house. Yeah, first of all. And then no, like just the house. I was like, I don't know about that. And then everyone right away. First episode, everyone lying to each other, talking behind everyone's back, all that How shit. I was like, happen? I can't. Like, I don't understand in real life. Yeah. There's not that much drama, but then when you go on TV, there's all this drama. Like, is it because it's, well, they prompt them. They, they prompt, prompt them. Yeah. They prompt them. They, they edit it strategically. Drama. Yeah. And they, and they, in some of those shows, they like encourage you to drink so that oh, you'll start yeah, to true, like true. make mistakes, you yeah. know? So, and, and I, and I, I behind, boy, behind girl, the scenes, I think there's a lot. I also think usually it's like boys and girls. So people are fighting over, like it's not a natural environment. And they know, they know if you play by the producer's rules, you're going to get more camera time, more camera time equals more exposure and opportunity outside of the show right so a lot of them play play the game because they want to be on air True. as as often as possible so then they get when they when they're off the show they get the like their cloud is waiting for them right and they'll ask you like they'll ask you questions so um like i was being pretty annoying don't you think yeah that guy was being pretty annoying and then they'll put that like yeah clip yeah yeah, yeah exactly well i learned that with dragon's den like i was in the, i was in dragon's den in the um like I pitched for almost an hour and they only showed seven minutes. So they cut up exactly what they wanted, how they wanted, and they presented it. Lucky for me, I had my shit together and I didn't like completely embarrass myself. But had I said a few stupid things, they could have easily clipped that up and been like, this guy's an idiot, <laughs> you know, up like next. they could have. Up next, this local loser. No. Yeah, this, this moron. Well, it's the same with the news. Once I was on the news for something and I kept talking about God, I'm like, the reason I made this mural was, uh, it was, I don't even know. I kept, I kept ending it with something to do with God or something. And then they took all of that out and <laughs> said the one line that had nothing to do with it. And I was like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's always the case. They, they interviewed me for fighting in hockey because they took out fighting in, um, in the Quebec leagues, so like the wildcat league. Um, there's no more fighting. So they interviewed me cause I fought a lot in that league and they yeah, saw oh, this that. would be interesting. 
Yeah, well, I I was in there for a long time, and and I had my answers like premeditated. Like this was a subject that I have a firm opinion on, and I'm glad they asked me because I was like, I'm ready. Like I'm ready for this. So I had my answers. I was in Nashville actually at the time, and I did my interview in the hotel, cool. and um, and they cut it all out, and they just put in like a few short clips, and they did not <laughs> really <laughs> highlight <laughs> my nervous. argument. Well, they they just they. There was a sociologist and my opinion, two opposite opinions. They gave me like 40 seconds of my argument <laughs> and like three minutes of her argument. And that pissed me off big time. Um, and then when they showed me, they showed like a clip of me fighting, like a really violent exchange yeah. of punches, like the look worst. so violent, you know, just music. to make it. Yeah, like just to make it look worse. And I'm just like. Have you ever gave like somebody a concussion or something? Or like, Oh, I'm sure. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've broken a few noses and like knocked out teeth and stuff, so I'm sure that concussions oh, really? probably. Do yeah. you like feel but bad far- after? <laughs> no, of course not. No, it's part of it's part of the game. I mean, they they engage. It's not yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. they're unwilling. They're, like you know, we both consciously yeah. choose, right? They were all fine after eventually. Well, I mean, everyone's fine. It's just that's just part of the sport, you know. So like in football, if you hit somebody hard, you don't apologize immediately yeah. after. That's just I part would. of I'd the game. Like, oh, yeah. You're gonna be calling in the next day. Are you okay? Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no it's but great. that just to your point originally like they can cut that stuff up right so you're at the mercy of that and if you're in a house for 60 days and you don't see the outside world like it can get kind of probably confusing and you could start to maybe act outside of who you yeah. really are in yeah. that context too right because you are a victim of the environment so if you're around all this mm-hmm. like trash toxic drama you're going to become part of that you know yeah or you just don't get any airtime if you're. Or you don't get any airtime. You're boring. You get voted off and whatever. You know that's. I don't know. I don't know. It might be a good idea though, just to build. Like, it would get people talking. Yep. Uh, yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, it would get you in. That's you know, kind of why the... I thought about Miss Universe because I was like, oh, like this might help my. But I don't know. It would help. It would help your business. Like dra- my experience with Dragon's Den, and and you've been on the news a handful of times. I'm sure you'd agree. Like it helps your business. Yeah. It's all. That, that... People feel like oh, I want to support this person now because yep. it's kind of done because it's like I was the same person before being on the news. My art was the exact same, but now you want to buy from me, but it's the game. Yeah. Same with yeah. you. Yeah. And I mean, people want to be associated with successful people too, right? Like, so if they see you're doing well, they want to, they want to get in on it, you know, like I'd like her painting, like, you know, and again, it goes back to the the art being a conversation piece. It's like, that adds to your story. Katie was on global news last month and I got her art on my wall. Like it's, no, it's a flex, right? <laughs> yeah, it is though. Cause I mean, most people don't get on the news <laughs> multiple times, you know, or ever. I want to get on right? Fox news. It's my goal. <laughs> I need to do you something. Get can- you want, you want to get canceled. Uh, That's what you want. I feel like I can't get famous cause I would get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> you would, but I don't, the, the whole cancel thing but is I'm, slowing down. The yeah. cancel culture thing slowing down. Like some people are pushing back and saying like, fuck this. This is stupid. Conservatives We're not. are kind of taken over. Cause it's always like, it's either extreme left or extreme right. And now it's kind of like, it's balancing. I find. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed the middle area when like, if you were an asshole, no one wanted to associate with you, but also you were not walking on eggshells to be canceled at any waking moment. I find you it's know? not just canceled that's popular. It's the fact that people will ride something. So, for instance, let's say some. Let's say I said something in this podcast that might have been a little bit iffy. Like I'm sure I said something that could have offended somebody easily, and then one person comments that, and then another person's like, "Yeah, that's true." But then, so then yeah. a bunch of people will add on to that, and that's how it kind of grows. Whereas. Yeah. Yeah, I find like people will just like hop on a bag bang wagon. What's it called? Uh, bandwagon. Bandwagon yeah. that's popular, and they don't. They yeah. might not even care that much just because. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. They don't. But if you're the person in the bullseye, you think they care a lot, right? But it's like literally people passively putting a troll comment, moving on, and forgetting about it probably a half an hour later. But um, has that yeah. happened to you in your career? Where like something? <laughs> I don't. I never yeah. heard of anything. Yeah, I've had um I've had some people make comments. It's it's really hard. Like it's it's hard to please everybody. That's the thing, right? And country liberty people have had comments about country liberty and I mean it's just you can't please everybody, right? So 
I'm trying to get really good at pleasing my. But you've never had audience. like a news article going bad about you or anything like crazy. No, nothing no. news. No, no. I'm just talking like trolls on social yeah, yeah. media, right? Yeah. yeah no, nothing horrible. like that. And but, like fake um, accounts. I love fake accounts. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing with that is like <laughs> fake accounts and just trolls in general. Like, how are you spending your time? Like, yeah. what? Like, you're that miserable that you have to sit on your couch and scroll and just put hate and then scroll and then put more hate and scroll and put hate. Like what's going on inside of you? That's my question for those people that sit and troll. Like personally, I have good days. I have bad days, all that stuff, but I never feel like just trolling. Like I never feel like just like let's attack people and attack this person. You know, it yeah. never goes through my head. I don't know. I don't think it, I think it, it bothers me more who would say something like, for instance, if I have like 10 comments and they're all negative about my art, not that it's happened, but if I clicked on their profiles and they're all like fake usernames or just yeah. like people with like one, one friend or something, I'm like, okay, well, I don't even know. Like, what is this person? It's a fake. It's a burner. Account. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that doesn't bother me. But if it's like someone who I look up to just one comment, that would hurt me more than, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I totally feel that. But typically, like, if it's someone you look up to, they're probably a good person, and they probably don't fucking troll people's pages. Yeah, like, exactly. You know what I mean? yeah, that's, that's never happening. Yeah, exactly. It's always yeah, like, it's okay. it's not in their nature. Yeah, yeah. So, Funny. yeah, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, I wonder what's going on with those people that do that because it's it's just it's got to it can't feel good to do that. <laughs> and I feel like it's just people done this podcast. <laughs> well, if I the... see that it's you, if I see what that it's is you, this it's. Shirt? <laughs> It'll just be funny, but it's funny because I grew up in an environment where like, if you don't fucking tease each other, you're not friends. Like we grew up in a harsh, like you, if you wear a shirt, that's a little too tight or a shirt, the wrong color or whatever, my boys will roast the shit out of me, but it doesn't hurt my feelings because they're my closest friends. Right. Yeah. So that, that's kind of the environment that I grew up in. Yeah. And it's fun in that context when there's people you like know and love. Uh, but it's like weird when it's not, but I've also realized through all of that, the importance of just having a good couple quality people in your life like couple ride or dies yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't fucking need anybody like you don't need to please the trolls or the pe or the burners or the people on that you know subjectively don't right. like your art or subjectively don't like oh, yeah. whatever i'm doing like um you know if you have a few people that really know who you are and and know that you're a good person and all that i mean but what anytime, more do you need? anytime you put yourself out there like me and you were out there we're, that's how we make a living and a lot yep. of people don't understand that, like they work nine to five somewhere or they might have a business, but they don't need to put themselves out there as much because their business just like sells for itself or whatever. So yep. it's easy for us to be targets and for people to make fun of us or to be like, oh, why did Katie make that video? Or, oh, why did Sawyer do right. this? And like, it's so easy just because we're so out there. But it's like you try doing that. Like not many people actually could like anyone that makes fun of me. I'm just like, all right, like you try to make a yep. living selling 250 paintings a year. Yep. and see how you yep. do and like i don't know so yep. to those people it's just like okay I, I i i love that response because yeah. it's so easy even say my podcast like it's like this little itty bitty podcast right now so it's not just like immediate success like everyone would hope but i didn't expect it to be because no. that's not how success happens and people would have comments and say geez well his podcast isn't that good why is he doing that and i literally playing hockey i had some fucking loser loser <laughs> oh man this is kind of a this is kind of a this is a bit of a longer story i'll shorten it this guy's on the bench for real chirping me he said someone's coming for you like gonna fight me right so i look at him i say you are you gonna fight me yeah yeah i'm gonna fight you i said no problem i'll, I'll fight you next shift comes out drop my gloves grab him let's go calling his bluff because i knew he didn't want to fight me he didn't fight me he backed down like a coward and then we both go to the box. So now we're chirping in the penalty box back and forth. And this fucking guy says uh, <laughs> something like sweet podcast or something. I was like, what kind of fucking chirp is that? I was like, what are you doing with your life? Yeah. I'm out here. I'm out here swinging the bat. I'm trying. I'm trying yeah. different things. I'm, yeah, you know, you can't, you can't make fun of anyone for doing something or trying. No, you never make fun. of. And that's the weirdest thing about the high school dynamic. It's like the kid that tries really hard, like, oh, why is he trying so hard? So stupid and immature because that's the person that's going to be successful, right? In the real world. Oh, yeah. Every time. So it's like, I always get a kick out of that. People giving someone else a hard time for just trying. Like if you're not stepping on someone yeah, else, yeah. you're not hurting someone else let them do their frigging thing. And usually they'll work it out along the way. And 
you know, I mean, I've tried many different things and I've been successful just a few times and thankfully it supports my living, but I failed lots of times and yeah. lots of things I've tried didn't work out. It's just, it's, well, that's why you have to game. have like self-confidence because you can't rely on others. Um, or else yeah. like the first, the first insult, you'll just be torn. So but, um, yeah, you get, you got to have a goal and you got to have a reason why, like, why are you doing something right? And, and, and if your why is strong enough, you don't care about the, the naysayers along the way, no. but I love that you said, like you do it, yeah, you yeah. know, like so many people give me advice on like neg, not advice. Cause it's negative. It's coming from a place of Criticism. hate. And I'm just like, well, will you do it? Yeah, like you, it you start a, clo- you start a clothing brand. Yeah, you yeah. do it. It's not that fucking easy, yeah. you know? Or, or even hockey fighting, that's another one too. Why don't you fight that guy? It's like, why don't you fight him? You know, like, no, you, oh, you don't want to? Okay, then shut up. Don't tell me to do it. You know, but so it's. Overall, I think me and you both don't have many people that are like haters. I don't no. Think, I don't think like. I Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I have you. wonderful people in my life and I have wonderful customers and wonderful supporters. Yeah. And if it wasn't for those people, I mean, my business literally wouldn't exist. Yeah, and neither yours. Every time you read any of your comments on like a photo, everyone's like, Sire, I love you. <laughs> you get, like, everyone's just true. like, ah, I love that. this is amazing. <laughs> not, One comment, you're like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> who wants to go? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, but it, it's part of trying to do something unconventional and you're an artist, you own a business, you own an art, you know, art in itself is, is a very unconventional pursuit. Yeah. So of course you're going to have people that push back. And I think that there's probably a lot of people, Katie, that would look up to doing what you're doing, but just maybe not have the get up and go or the confidence to do it. And I think that um, resentment can exist in that format. Or like I'm doing uh, what I, my dream, like not everyone has a calm right. or even if I'm like not crazy rich or whatever, I'm doing my childhood dream and not many people can say they're doing that. So yeah, I think there can be like resentful, resentfulness yeah. or like, yeah. Oh, what's she doing? She's making paintings or that. I can't believe she sold that. That's not even good. Or, uh, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But no, you're right. I, I don't see anything negative um, when I look at your pages, but I'm also not looking through the comments, but I, and I don't feel much negativity either through mine. I feel like anyone that doesn't, like my business or brand or whatever, just, they just don't follow and they don't comment and they don't buy. And that's fine. You know, like typically we're hardest on ourselves. Um, Yeah. Especially if you're like a perfectionist or trying to perfect your craft or improve and get better. Like in order to get better, you kind of have to be harder in your business a bit too. Like, Hey, what needs improvement? How can I get better? Yeah. And yeah, I find me and you are similar in a sense where we're not just like satisfied with, okay, well, you know, this shirt, this is all I'm going to do. You're like, okay, well, what else, what season can I do here? Like, you're always like thinking of new ideas. Like your brain's always going, same with me with painting. Like I don't just do one style. I'm like, okay, well, I want to learn this style. How can I do this? Right. So we're always like, yeah. Do you, do you ever think it's too much? Do you think you put too much pressure on yourself sometimes? I don't put too much pressure on myself because I feel like there's some kind of, um, there's some leeway with being an artist where it's like, oh, well it's art. So if it's not like perfect, there's a little yep. bit more room, whereas like your business, your clothing has to be perfect. Like there can't be any cross stitching. There can't yep. be any. So filled with art, there's a little bit more room for mistakes. So that's what I say, especially being an abstract artist. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. So I, I don't think I'm hard on myself. And I feel like that's why I'm. Um, yeah, I feel like there can't be any stress when I'm painting. Like if I was hard on myself or if it was stress, the painting would probably mm. show in that. Like I need to be in a good, happy, healthy state to keep painting and to have energy and to keep going and to like finish a complete a painting. Right. So yeah. So I have to be really like in a good mood to paint. Do you have to be in like a creative space or can you kind of force yourself into painting mode and say, okay, it's time to go to work. I'm, I'm going to get to it. Or do you, is, is it more of like a feeling where you're like, okay, I'm feeling creative. I'm going to go start painting. A bit of both because I tell myself I have to paint five paintings a week. Like that's how I have to pay the bills. Like there's not like, Oh, well mm. this week I don't feel like painting. Right. But um, yeah, I try to paint when I feel like it in the day, as long as I paint a painting that day, it doesn't necessarily matter when. Yeah. But so sometimes I may be like, oh, today I'm going to do it in the afternoon. Oh, today I'm going to do it at supper. So. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. As long as I do it in the okay. day. 
And how about how about the business part? Like, do you have a passion for that, or do you just kind of do it because you have to? And you and what do you like? Mean? Do you enjoy the business part of it, or just the creating the art part of it? What's like the business part of it? Well, just like, like the elaborate. invoicing and the back oh, and yeah. forth with customers <laughs> and the you know that that the admin yeah, stuff, yeah, the, yeah. all that, no, the I, promotion. I like it all because it it um, changes, switches it up. Like if I was just you know doing invoices all day, obviously that would be boring. If I was just painting all yeah. day, that would drain me and then I'd get sore. So you know, going meeting with clients or going to events um, or doing admin stuff or posting online or painting. I like how it's all different. Like I like doing it all to be honest. So yeah, yeah, no, it's a good gig. It's exciting. Cool. I like so everything. what's, uh, what's, uh, what's next for you? What's kind of on the horizon. Do you got any goals this year or any, <laughs> any, uh, you know, projects you're excited about? Um, my goal. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes a sarcastic answer. <laughs> I feel like so many goals you're like well actually i'm gonna be making an airbnb in dubai, <laughs> dubai. <laughs> that's probably your next goal it's just i'm gonna see a post one day and you're like yeah i did this you're always on the go i'm like uh meanwhile my goal is to like go to bed before two <laughs> and go to the gym those are my goals too i'm not like uh, well, both those things i'm not good at i i guess my goal with art is to keep excelling. I do believe since I started, I have improved. Like if you look at my portfolio from beginning to end, it keeps getting a little bit better. Um, and I have like in 2020, for instance, I was selling orders for 450. Now they're 650 and I'm taking nice. orders sometimes for like 1500. I've sold a few for like 3000. So basically to keep perfecting my art, spending more time on it, Yep. and selling for more. So basically, it's a slow process, though. Like, a lot of people just expect things overnight. When I first started, I was selling 50 bucks. The next year, 100 bucks. Like, literally for, like, 13 years. Like, it's, yep. it's never been, like, yep. a big leap. So just to keep the momentum and to keep, um, yeah, keep doing what I'm doing because I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to hear that, though, because, I mean, you, you only have so much time. So the only way you can only increase your rates, right? Like you can't, yeah. you know, unless you start selling prints or something, you're not going to grow your business unless you increase your, your rates. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So just, uh, just keep going, you know, what's, what are your 2024 goals? I feel like you have like 50. <laughs> I don't know if we've done. <laughs> well, honestly, I, Here we go. well, like low level, like, you know, get my sleep back straight which needs to be improved by like i'd say a half an hour to an hour start going to bed a little bit earlier that's not um, that's like my dream no yeah that's manageable um but higher level i mean i want to get cabine off the ground you know that's a brand new business so there's a lot of like growing pains and a lot of like startup stuff that we have to get sorted out over the next like six to 12 months um so there's that for country liberty we have i've involved uh, i've hired a few new people involved a few new team members in different aspects of the business so working a lot on the business and not so much in the business, like working on the big picture stuff is what I'm trying to do more of. And I'm hiring some really smart people and smart. people that pe people that were better smart. at certain categories than I was, they're now taking my roles. So really excited about that. So our product dev this year is uh, going to be awesome. Uh, we have a lot of in, uh, improved products coming. I'm excited about, and I really want to expand to the Southeast U S I want to start selling. Um, to the US. I want to start selling in Tennessee and 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 start it start there and and, and try to expand outward in, do, the, in the US. You should do like American flag paintings. Or or not paintings, but American <laughs> paintings. flag. You want me to start competing with you in the painting industry or what? <laughs> Let's go. American flag logo is like Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, we're it's they, hard like their flag. <laughs> Just, oh, they do. They're yeah. very, very patriotic. And that's something like culturally, they're actually pretty different than us. And I've been educating myself on that because I have to be relatable with 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 the Americans. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot. One thing that I've done irresponsibly is I have way too many products. Like I have such a wide product offering. We have like the, with the same logo, like 20 color hoodies. Like it's just crazy. So I'm really trying to cut down yeah. on my skews, go deeper with like winning skews and and um I'm trying to have one nice product offering that applies both to Canada and U S instead of saying like, okay, this is all for the U S this is all okay. for Canada. 
because uh, inventory just gets out of control yeah, yeah, yeah. very quickly well, uh, I if I just American say yes flag. to everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, Old Navy used to rock that. Like yeah. they used to sell a pile of American, like American type stuff. I don't know if Old Navy's still a thing, but when I was like a middle schooler or whatever, I remember we always used to have like the big American flag on our Old Navy shit. But that is smart what you said not to have like, you know, when you go to Lululemon, for instance, typically there's only like that's a huge store. Typically there's only like three options for a certain pant. Like there's not like or three yeah. colors for a certain pant. I mean, so there's different pant, but like, yeah. With situations like that, if you give people choice, they choose. And I think with Lulu where they have um, maybe three offerings, you just go there and you don't think about the missing colors that could be there. You just choose from what's available. Where me, I always thought, well, what if they want red? What if they want a shade of salmon? What if they want a shade of maroon? What if I they, find you know? people buy more when they give when you give them less options. For instance, like I have so many different styles of paintings and so many different like I've made so many different types of paintings and sometimes it can be overwhelming. Like people are like, oh, I want to buy a painting from you, but when it comes crunch time, they literally get overwhelmed. And they don't know what to pick. They don't know what to choose. Right. That happens a lot. Yep. So I'll say, okay, well, you know, what do you like? And then they'll say, oh, I like animals. Okay, well, what kind of, what's your favorite animal? Oh, I would like this. Okay, well, and then I'll just give them, instead of set, sending them like 14 different elephants I've done, I'll send them like two of my top most popular ones. Right. Okay, pick between these two. So if I gave them 14, they probably will be like, oh, I'll let you know. I'll come back with you. Like they just... They can't. Yep. But if they gave them two, they're like, oh, yeah, I like this one. Okay, let's go. Right. So I find that helps less options sometimes with selling. Yeah, I, I shop that way. Like when I was renovating my house, buying furniture, things like that, like I don't know. Like I appreciate a nice couch when I sit on one, but I don't know what I'm looking for. You know, like yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And thank God I had mom to help me. Uh, but, uh, you know, if there's two options, like I prefer that method. Show me the best two options. I'll pick A or B. Perfect. Done. Yeah, Move yeah. on. You know. But if you show me 10, then I might be like, well, geez, maybe that, that ninth option would have fit better with the flooring or whatever, right? Yeah, I think that's called something. I forget, but I know there's like studies <laughs> on this of like option. Like it's called something. I forget. Like there's too many analysis, options. Analysis paralysis? Yeah, maybe? I, I don't you know. just analyze and procrastinate and don't make a decision? I think it's when you have too many choices and you get overwhelmed and you won't make any choice or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I, I think I made that up. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. To be honest. Are you diagnosing me right now, live on the air? No, I'm saying like it's a thing that if you have too many choices, it's a bad thing. Yeah, no, that's that's right for me for sure. Because I, like I said, I show me two options, I'll choose my favorite. And if I was shopping and painting, is so crazy because you can go any direction with it. Yeah, there's infinite options. And I don't just do one style. Like many artists will stick with one style, right. so people know. Okay, well, she does that, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a little bit of everything. But overall, um, wow, well, I just, I just, I've actually been doing pretty good. Like, typically I'm a lot more like, and I'm trying to like not. <laughs> no, you're doing great. <laughs> I'm doing it now. No, I was going to say that you're doing really good in your career, <laughs> and I'm really proud of you. And no, in all seriousness, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, all seriousness. Do you have a serious <laughs> bow in your body? Yes, I do. Listen. <laughs> I'm really proud of you and I feel like you're doing very well and everybody knows like when people think of your brand I feel like people know you work really hard like I feel like people associate that with you like with your brand they're like, oh, Sawyer's always on the go he's always working hard and they say okay well this is a well-respected brand like that must feel good to know that you've created that that you have like this well-respected brand in yourself and also in your business that people are like I feel like no. I'd thank you. I'd thank you for ego yeah. if I had that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying that. Um I don't know. I don't I I do my best. Work ethic is one thing I've learned through hockey and just growing up is like work ethic is the one variable you can control. So I know I'll always work hard as long as I'm like physically capable. Um that's for sure. So I'm you know, it's really rewarding to hear you say that. So thank you. <laughs> do you ever get like satisfied? You're like, okay, I'm, I'm happy. Like this is enough. Or are you just like, I got to keep leveling up. I got to keep going. Like, cause right yeah, now you're never. doing the Airbnbs. You're like, I got to keep mm. like your mind's always, you're yeah. never just like, no. okay, I'm going to take a break right now. And then I'm going to go back. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how to do that, but it's something I've been thinking a lot about. I got to learn how to do that, especially if I want balance. Like when I, if I have a family and stuff one day, like I got to have that part figured out, I think, or figure it out when that, chapter arrives but um 
yeah, no, I, I'm always just trying to do the next thing. Like, I think I, you can I do can't. both. I think both can coexist at the same time. Like, you can be like, yeah. I'm happy where I am. I'm happy with what I accomplished. I'm proud of myself, but I still want to keep. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I, I always want more. What I'm learning now is, um, there's a difference between working hard and working smart. And I think yeah. as I get older, my energy starts to go down. Maybe I have, uh, <laughs> like I said, a family life or other obli- like other um, obligations. I just got to get better at working smarter and being more productive within the time window I give myself to actually work instead of just like working all day, all night, and then just expecting my life to, to balance, right. you know? You've talked about being older many times. You're like, yeah, I'm so old now. I'm like, if anyone's just listening to this and don't actually know, it's like this young guy talking. Like, <laughs> like, well, I'm, I'm 31. Thinking, yeah. I'm 31 now, Katie. I'm, you I'm know, but I feel it. It's, it's not so much the number part. Oh. It's the, I feel it. Like I'm tired now no, and I playing hockey like hurts now and stuff. You think that's in my head? Yeah. yeah that's like, 33 is still pretty young. There's like, people are still in the NHL at like 40. Yeah. Okay. Not many of them. Yeah. There's some. But yeah. No, I know you're right. Yeah. It's all in your head. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. All right. Well, I'm not going to keep any longer, Katie. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Um, How long were we talking? we right now my thing says an hour and 25 minutes yeah so this like... will probably be my longest episode actually <laughs> you said an hour so i was like okay <laughs> i know but we went on a little tangent that's all right we were due to catch up anyway i hadn't seen you i haven't seen you since you did the um painting at the elementary school yeah that's true no it was fun i actually enjoyed it it was so chill i've done a podcast before um with somebody and it was fun but um I don't know. I was a bit more nervous. Like this team was a bit more relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Where can everybody find you? What are your handles? What are your pages? Yeah. If you stuff? guys can please. What's your website? <laughs> 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 if you guys can please buy from me. Uh, just based on <laughs> Katie to wear on art, not Katie to wear on personal. Don't add me and be a creep. Add me. No, <laughs> follow me on my business page. Instagram, I don't really post art too much. It's just my name, Katie Dwaron. But um, yeah, I don't have a website. I don't have a gallery story. I'm not. I'm not professional. You're doing it great. You're doing great. Don't sell yourself short. Did you have fun those, with me? Get those blueberries in, yeah. Did you have fun? <laughs> you have yes, fun? I did. Wait, Thanks. is there gonna be like a, a video of this? I want to like share it on my Instagram, like a quick, because I've 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 seen like you post some quick. Yep. So yeah, I post so I post a I post a reel. I don't know when this will actually air because um nah. I have a few already nah. stocked, I guess. So it'll oh. be three or four weeks probably. Make sure you get one where I like look really good. I think that's the one I want. <laughs> I'll tell my editor to make sure that <laughs> just, I'll make sure we get a real good thumbnail for you. Can you edit my face too? Like just make me look amazing. That's that. all I care about. <laughs> all right, Katie. Well, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thanks. Show.